And now, the interview with the Resurrector. Hello everyone, I'm Devin. And I'm the Resurrector. Today, I'll be doing an interview with the Resurrector. This should be interesting. So, Resurrector, you're a Revenant, right? Yes, I am a Revenant. What Revenant are you? The Revenant that knows how to bring people back to life. And how do you bring people back to life? It's not that easy. It has to be perfect. Can you explain why? In order to bring someone back to life, first of all, you need to make sure they have relatives that are still alive. Relatives? Yes, relatives. You know, mother, father, brother, sister, son, daughter, uncle, aunt, etc. And what's hard about that? You have to make sure that people share your blood. Tell me how. Sometimes children share blood with different people, and that's how they make children their sons or daughters. Is it something like a blood family? It depends, because there is such thing as a full blood and half blood. What's the difference between a full blood family and a half blood family? Full blood means you share your blood with both of your parents. Half blood means you share blood with one parent. What about no blood? No blood means you don't share blood with anyone. But how do you resurrect anyone? Well, after you make sure that someone's relatives are still alive, you need to make sure that you resurrect someone during a sunny day. A sunny day? Yes. A perfect sunny day. No clouds, no rain, no snow, no sleet. You get the point. Okay, then what? You have to make sure that both of your bare feet are exposed. Then place both feet either on the tombstone or on the chest of a dead body. And then say the spell in a different language. And what different language do you have to use? You can say the resurrecting spell in Spanish, French, Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, German, or even Arabic. Arabic? It's one of the hardest languages to learn. Heck, people that live in the Middle East know how to speak Arabic. Well, not all people in the Middle East know how to speak Arabic, but what about Portuguese? Yes, you can use Portuguese to say the resurrecting spell. But what happens when the person is being resurrected? The resurrecting spell turns the dead body and the cadaver into a beautiful person and brings them back to life. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. What else can you do besides resurrect people? Well, I have telekinesis and I can manipulate ice. How do you manipulate ice? Well, the funny thing is, I was born December 25th, 2004. Okay, but what about ice manipulation? When I was born December 25th, 2004, I got my ice manipulating powers from the snow. Wait a second, it did not snow in Texas on December 25th, 2004. That's because I was born in Ohio during a snowy day. Oh, I get it. So you're a northerner. Basically, I was born in the northeast. Okay, that makes sense. I was born in Wadesworth, Ohio during a snowy day. But how did you become a revenant? My dad is a revenant and my mom was human. So you were born as a revenant. I was born as a revenant, just like my sister. Who is your sister? Soul Corruptor. She was born October 31st, 2008. So your sister is a Halloween girl, isn't she? Yes, she is. Do you have any brothers? No, I don't. Why not? After giving birth to Soul Corruptor and cutting the umbilical cord off my mother, my mother died. Does that mean... Yep, she died after childbirth. How did your mother die after childbirth? She was sick and weak, 
and she didn't recover after giving birth to me. Then how did your mother give birth to your sister, Soul Corruptor? My mother was weak after she gave birth to me, but she was lucky enough to survive childbirth. What about your sister? Here's a conspiracy theory about humans giving birth to revenants. What is the conspiracy theory? The conspiracy theory about humans giving birth to revenants is that after giving birth, the humans become weak and sick after one child. And not only that, you have to wait until your four years of recovery are done. So, what would happen if a human being gives birth to a second revenant? If you give birth to a second revenant and your four years are not done, you be dead. But if you give birth to a second revenant and your four years are completely done, you're still going to get sick, but you're going to have to recover again. So you have to wait for another four years of recovery? If you want another revenant child, then yes. What would happen if a 40-year-old person gave birth to a revenant child? If you are 40 years or older and you give birth to a revenant child, you're not going to survive. Why not? I don't know. Maybe humans that are 40 years or older don't work well with revenants. Isn't 40 still a little bit young? Because people don't retire at the age of 40. Not for us autistic superheroes, because when we reach to the age of 40, that's when we discover that our powers are overwhelming us. Overwhelming you? Yes, overwhelming us. Our powers could kill us. How do your powers overwhelm you? When we reach to the age of 40, that's when our bodies become weak and we have to go to the hospital to get our medication. But what about your powers? The medication that the doctors give us will soften our powers until we are ready to die. But how do you get ready to die? It's either we stop taking our medication or put ourselves in danger. Put yourself in danger? Like what? You know, fight a villain stronger than you or put yourself at risk on any hazards or maybe let your sickness kill you. I saw that some of the autistic superheroes had to go to the hospital for their medication. That's because after giving birth to a child, the autistic superheroes need to have their medication. Why would they need their medication? After childbirth, autistic superheroes can possibly become weak, and that's when the doctors give them their medication. How long do the autistic superheroes have to take their medication? They have to take their medication for at least three months. Heatstroke told me that your powers prevent you from having diabetes. Even if our powers do prevent us from getting sick, fat, or having diabetes, we still have to go to the hospital to get our medication so that our powers will not kill us. What would happen if a revenant gave birth to a child? If the mother is a revenant and the father is human, the mother will not get sick. Okay, what if both parents were revenants? Both of them will not get sick after childbirth. So if the mother is human and the father is a revenant, the mother is going to get weak and sick? After giving birth to one child, she will get sick and weak. But what if she had twins or triplets? The mother would be at risk of dying. That's pretty harsh. It would be best if the human mother would just give birth to one child so that she can recover before she has another one. I understand. Let's just move on. Okay, then. So, when you went to school in Ohio, what happened to you? Well, you see, when I was a little girl, I had to disguise myself as a human being. Disguising yourself as a human being? Okay. However, I had to go to school barefoot, but that didn't bother me. Why did you have to go to school barefoot? If I wear shoes, socks, boots, flats, slippers, sandals, flip-flops, high heels, etc., they would turn into ice and they would break. Well, that explains your cold powers. 
Everything was going perfect until I became a third grader. When I became a third grader, some third grade bullies decided to dump some ice water on me. Oh my, that sounds pretty bad. After the third grade bullies dumped some ice water on me, my disguise got ruined and all of the third graders saw what I truly was. Oh, that's terrible. Every single third grade student started laughing at me. That is very, very terrible. All of the third grade teachers saw what happened, and they decided to suspend them for two months. Well, that's one way to teach them a lesson. I was the only third grade student who didn't get suspended. That must have sucked to be the only student in class. At least I was a well-behaved third grader. That sounds great. Yeah, it was. So, how did you discover your ice powers? When I became a junior high student, I was in a toy store and I wanted to buy some toys that I wanted. Until I saw a burglar and I decided to set up a trap with my ice powers. So, how did the burglar fall into your ice traps? I made him slip on some ice, which made him crash into his own car. Which area did he crash into his car? He broke the windshield with his face, and his face was all scarred and bleeding. Oh my, that hurts. But after I bought a teddy bear in the toy store, the police officers came and arrested the burglar. I see. When the cashier lady saw that I was barefoot, she shrugged her shoulders and said, Eh, I'm not worried about it. That sounds interesting. I totally agree on that. The autistic superheroes told me that when someone kills you, you easily come back to life. Why is that? Well, obviously, I'm a resurrecting revenant. I know you are, Resurrector. But after I die, the person who killed me goes into a world called Revenant World. And how does it work? When you enter Revenant World, you're in a world full of ice and snow. That sounds like a cold world. It is a cold world. You are literally freezing to death in that world. You mean, you die frozen inside that world? Yes, you die frozen, since you have no warm clothes to protect you. Is there a way to survive Revenant World? No, there is no way to survive Revenant World. No fire, no water, no food, no warm clothes, nothing. You're just gonna stay there until you are frozen, dead. What happens after someone dies in Revenant World? I come back to life, and the dead body comes back to the real world. What would happen if they killed you while wearing warm clothes? Your warm clothes will disappear when you enter Revenant World. You will be stuck in your underwear. Stuck in my underwear? How? It's simple. No shirt, no pants, no footwear. Just your underwear. Well, at least I wouldn't be completely naked. Of course you wouldn't be. Well, we're almost done. Okay, then. Who was your first villain that you have fought? Aquilia Spellcaster, the Avarice Revenant Witch. You mean the Revenant Witch who is bald? Yes, but she was not bald when I first encountered her and fought her. What made her bald? Orange Squeezer set her hair on fire. Okay, how did she do that? She used a blowtorch on Aquilia's hair, and Aquilia Spellcaster was not fast enough to put out the fire. And that's why Aquilia Spellcaster is bald? Yep, that's exactly why. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. Does your sister have any powers? Yes, she corrupts souls, and she can manipulate fire. Interesting. She can also walk through walls like a ghost. That's pretty nice. Yeah, sure is. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you for having me in this interview, Devin. I really enjoyed it. It is my pleasure. I hope we can do this again.
I'm sure we will resurrect her. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and leave a comment down below. And remember to click the subscribe button and the bell button so that you'll get notified about our future videos. And remember to follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. We all wish you a happy Easter and we hope that you have fun. But now if you'll excuse us, I'm going to take the Resurrector to go get some ice cream. Ooh, ice cream. I want vanilla. I'll get you some vanilla ice cream, Resurrector. But as always, thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. This is Devin Chisholm. And the Resurrector. Saying peace out, and we will see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Happy Easter.